Hi folks and welcome to this video which is about flocking and using latex for model making. So I started working with flocking six months ago and this is the first completed model that I made and the face is made from latex. I started using latex a few months ago. So since working with flock and with latex, I ran into a number of problems and made a few mistakes. And in this video, I'm going to go over some of those problems that we had and the ways we got around it. And I'll start by talking about flocking. This is the initial flocking set that I got back at the beginning of July last year. And it contained a very basic applicator in the form of a puffer bottle to apply the flock. But I found two problems with this form of applying the flock. The first being that I found it very difficult to get the action right. And though Paul managed it, I just couldn't get the hang of doing that. The second was that the results were not that good. It wasn't that neat. So we moved to applying flock using an electrostatic machine that Paul made himself. Though it is possible to buy electrostatic flocking applicators already made. And as well as it being much easier to apply the flock using an electrostatic machine, it also gave a much better result. And that's because the individual flock fibres turn on their ends and go on really evenly. So this one was done just with the puffer method and it's not that neat and it's quite fuzzy and there's like small areas that aren't covered. And this is the one that we did using the electrostatic machine and you can see it's covered much more evenly and looks so much better. A second problem that we had with one of the first things that we flocked was using an adhesive that was exactly the same colour as the, the base of the thing that we were flocking. Now, it's a good idea to use an adhesive that's the same colour as the flock that you're putting on so that if you've got any gaps, you, it doesn't stand out, it blends in okay. But the thing is, if you use exactly the same colour as the thing that you were flocking, you can't see where you've put the glue and where you haven't. So we had a lot of gaps left on it where Paul had missed putting some glue. And it turned out to be a bit of a mess because of that. So that was another lesson learned. Always use glue that's a slightly different colour than the base of the object that you are flocking. The next problem we had was when we tried to move on to long flock. And as you can see here, the item just didn't take the flock at all. So though we found that the electrostatic machine worked fine for one millimetre flock, as soon as we tried to move up to longer flock, it just didn't work. So that led to Paul constructing this Wimshurst machine and trying that out. And here Paul gives a demonstration of it working. So it's a machine that generates static electricity, which we can use for flocking by uh, having two rotating discs like this. I won't go into any, anything else of the principal operation. So, what's the voltage of this pool? Um, but by the length of the spark, it's somewhere between uh, 40 and 60,000 volts of static electricity available on these leads. And it seems to be that, we think, 
that allows us to flock with the longer fibres, the four millimetre fibres. Well, we've not had success with four millimetre fibres before, and we have on the first try with the Wimsers machine, so it, it, it could be that it's a higher voltage, which has given us um, the, that, that, that the good results with the long fibre, yeah. Here's some flocking that Paul did with the Wimshurst machine and it's fantastic. It's like fur. So that was a success. Up to this point, when I made objects to flock, I made them out of polymer clay. But round about October, I started experimenting with latex when I found out that it was possible to flock latex. I had preferred silicon to polymer clay because it was flexible and not hard, but it was impossible to flock silicon. So then I looked for something as an alternative and I found out you could flock latex. So when I first started using latex, I was leaving each layer to just dry naturally and it took absolutely ages. But then I found that it was possible to put it on a radiator to speed the process up. Though I did find that it was best to let the first few layers dry naturally because if you put it on the radiator it has got a tendency to get small bubbles in it it doesn't matter if you get those bubbles after you've built up a few layers because then they're still sort of underneath the surface and with the first molds i used the latex straight out of the bottle and if you just put latex in this is what it looks like when it comes out and then i painted it after and this is what it was like after it had been painted and you can see it looks like paint and it's a bit shiny so what i decided to do after that was to add the paint with the latex uh, as i made the latex part the good thing about latex is because it's water-based you can use any acrylic paint you just apply it to your mould as you would applying latex out of the bottle. You can see it looks a lot more like skin than when you add paint afterwards. And the final mistake that we made, or caused a problem for us, was using adhesive on top of latex mm. to flock it the, the adhesive is acrylic, uh, acrylic adhesive, mm. yeah. so the acrylic adhesive is very stiff it's very hard in comparison to the latex which is completely flexible and this is what happened over time um as you flex the latex um the adhesive cracks and the flock just comes off with it so uh, apart from the fact that it cracks, which is awful, it's not really adhered properly, has it? Nothing much seems to stick to latex apart from latex apart and from super its, glue. <laughs> yes, latex itself. Yeah. Now, with this pour, this was the first you tried, wasn't it? Using, the, using latex, latex yes, to stick the flock. To yeah. stick the flock rather than acrylic. Mm -hmm. And it worked marvellously. And it doesn't, it doesn't go stiff and it's really adhered well. So to use latex instead of adhesive, what you need to do is use a thickener to make it thicker. And I've just got a little bit of footage here showing how you mix latex up with the thickener. We measured. 200 millimetres of water in this jar we'll put a line there and then you fill up to that mark with your latex rubber and then you add a teaspoon of the latex thickener so 
so you then mix for one minute. You should be able to see it thickening up. So it's just going thicker now. Then you put your top back on your jar and you leave it to stand for two minutes before you use it. So if we return to my three models, in this one we used acrylic for the flocking and you can see here that it's cracked and come away a little bit. It also was more difficult to sort of glue it around the face, around the eyes, because it lost its flexibility. Whereas with this one, where we used latex for the flocking, it remained completely flexible and I was able to do a much neater job gluing around the eyes. And of course, there's no cracking. And in comparison with the first model that I made, the eyes on this one were much more squiffy. They're much neater on this last one. So I hope that by documenting those problems we had and the mistakes we made, that it can help any of you folks who want to work with both flock and latex. So that about wraps it up for this video, folks. Thanks for watching as always, and see you next time.